We are just building the framework for the tank dent removal. <clears throat> uh, very nice fella called Guy is going to come around and. <laughs> You have to be a little bit more brutal with this because the paint's damaged anyway. Uh, but because it is being restored, you can still uh, remove the dent in a fashion that you don't have to apply any filler or lead or anything. No, we don't want that to. I can be a bit more fine tuning off the okay off the stand now. Okay. I've I've taken a couple of pictures and sent it to the chroming guy and. Uh, just waiting for him to get back to me. See some of these big, these bigger dents, he's just going to prepare the tank for chroming. There's no way we can get away with leaving the original chrome on, unfortunately, but it's just a bit too far gone. So when I get it back from him, it's going to be pristine and new again, but at least we've got the original tank. So that's that's great. So stage one of the dent fall, and when, it get, when I get it back, hopefully we're all chromed up. So here's the latest update on the tank. Unfortunately, it's still not chromed. There is a very important reason for that, and that it failed. It failed with the chroming, uh, not everywhere, but on one particular area. And I just want to share this with you in case you get this done uh, and to try and avoid issue now. First, let me say, Guy is amazing. He, the guy who did the dents, he is so attentive to this project. He's so determined to get this tank uh, chromed uh, with, uh, so that it is perfect. So he lead filled this the old school way, thinking that that would be okay. Sent it to the chromer and the chrome wouldn't take. But the story didn't end there. So he went back to the chroma, they discussed it and they decided that solder would work better. And as you can see, this copper finish on it uh, is the first part of the process of the chroming stage. So he, I'm sure you'll see it in the video. Uh, suffice to say, this copper is the first stage of the chroming process, which obviously the chrome will then stick to this. So what they're going to do now is this tank is going off to a chap in Essex, um, whose address I'll put up on the on the screen. And he is going to look at how he can remove these pinholes. If, however, he finds these pinholes too tricky to t take out, he's going to cut this bit out, which is fairly radical. And then he's going to replace this material so that he has an absolutely smooth finish for the chroma. When you're sending the tank uh, to get re-chromed or re-sprayed or whatever, the last thing you want is for the couriers to damage the tank. So I can't stress enough how important it is to protect the bottom and the sides. Now, I'm lucky I have a box full of um, offcuts of rubber uh, matting for the workshops and uh, so I'm gonna chuck those in and make a safety net around this tank so there's no way anyone can puncture this okay it's back been a while. Let's see. I seriously have not seen this for the first time as I've come back. Wow.
So what we're doing now is looking at the pin stripe that we're going to put down um, for the line. So Arche and I, he's going to do something different this time. A nice old vintage motorcycle tank and he hates vintage motorbikes. I hate it. <laughs> so basically the chrome lines between the maskings is going to be your lines. The first one is the four millimeter one. Yeah, and then the two and then gap and then two. The gap two. and then two the same awesome. ones. Uh, it's got to be, yeah, it's got to be, oh, that's actually quite good. Is it? It's the same one. Yeah, that's and it. We've got the same, same one, yeah. That's more than enough. So that's, yep, that looks good, huh? Yep. yep. Now we're gonna start to mask and then... Very nice. Likely I've got this as a guideline, so it means that must be this right. That's a beautiful logo. Eh? Well, basically, what I've done is I just put one coat of black and out, and I tried to seal the logo. So I'm gonna let it dry nicely, and then I will carry on with more coats. But I wanted to make sure that it's well seated and well dry before I apply more. Otherwise, the sticker would maybe will melt or something, and I don't want that. What's nice is that he's very good at sanding things like this. You can see he is amazing. Look. He's got shiny, shiny. So this is now polished. Yes. Right, I'll put the this beautiful tank on some cloth. And now I'm just putting in a cork stop because I'm going to fill this with white vinegar. Yes, white vinegar to clean out the tank. So let's do that. Very dangerous spot. The process. I could drop this on the tank at any minute, damaging it. Pull that up to the top. Unfortunately, the company that did the repair of the tank cut. this now let me show you now they said that they pressure tested this tank um, and that maybe the chrome process caused this problem but this is clearly a fault in the weld as far as I'm concerned basically all the vinegar went down into the spray booth and damaged the lighting in there so this is a yeah unnecessary if you someone had concentrated a bit more on his job we would have had this issue. Um, anyway, it is what it is. Sorry, I couldn't film this, guys, but um, this heavy was full of uh, vinegar. I left him for two days. So I've washed it out with water, I'm still rinsing a little bit more, then I'm going to sit it upside down and dry it. Yeah, I got there this morning and let me show you. I don't know if it's clear enough for you to see, but if I move, there you go, you can see little bubbles have appeared. Another one here. Strangely enough, it's only on the one side. The opposite side seems to be okay. You know, the spirit is still there to get this done. And that, that's a good thing. And um, 
I, I believe I'm not going to be charged for this. So unless it's something I've done, but I don't believe that there is some, anything that I've done to cause this. This is so funny. It's becoming a real habit now. Packing this tank in this box. I'm surprised it still survived. All it needs to do is produce the thinnest lining on the inside surface. That's it. Just so beautifully engineered, honestly. If you could feel this, I mean, it is so smooth. It's like brass on brass. Finally, it has come back. Oh, all the graphics gone. Oh well. He soldered that for me. That's brilliant. Right, we're going to uh, line the tank now. I'm going to use West Systems because I've tried it. Uh, you can see. I have an example of a West Systems uh, liner, which I did in this bottle about a month and a half ago, two months ago. So I'm happy with that. So I'll continue that and do the tank. Now one word of caution, um, when you mix this much resin and uh, hardener together you cannot let it sit to cure inside this cup it'll smoke and it'll burn it could even uh, burst into flames so you've got to get it out onto the surface it doesn't work well when it's in a contained uh, uh, container like this where it's not allowed to thin out and cool and then it really gets hot it starts to agitate and um, yeah it's quite a it's quite scary when you see the white smoke coming off the glue. It's a very aggressive uh, hardener, very aggressive. Red on, slide in, and the last bit, I'm just compressing it down. So we give it a nice, good stir around. I hope this is enough, I'm sure it is. I mean, it's, it's just like half a liter. Yeah, please. We're there. Good. So I'm just using 400 to clean off the excess. And that should really be enough. I'm going to show you the tank now that it's been resprayed for the second time. Um, okay, just sprayed it. So. Believe it or not, that's still yet to be polished. So I can't wait to get this on the bike and get the, certainly the build done and then the detail started. So detailing the bike, cleaning it up with all this messy um, assembly work that gets done and the little chips that get, but I'll take you on a on a tour of that and of how we detail up a bike once it's uh, complete and running. So we don't necessarily have to faff anymore with mechanics then we can really get down and tidy the bike and finish it. I'm hoping these are the tank badges, which I've decided to replace because now that the tank is so beautifully done, the, the old ones are just too cracked and I can't, I can't really justify restoring those for the price of replacements. Well, we're going to check them against uh, 
rinse the old ones and if they're radically different the old ones are going back on it looks like terrible can you see they are very bad mm. cattle they didn't cut them mm. very nicely look at all of these extra brother brother that you've got over there so we're just tidying a little bit this To get the profile of the badge to fit the tank exactly, just push the rubber background back and then it, it bonds quickly. So it just conforms to the shape, which is maybe one of the reasons why they do that. Okay, you can see the little gap in the corner and you can just close it off by doing that. That's it. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't film actually putting the whole thing on. But I got so excited that I forgot to, to film it.